Uh, and, the, and the thing on the floor. Hallelujah. Anybody consumed yet? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to hold that off till the end. So, Lord, I give you praise and glory. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, that there is a reason for my madness. Because it's you. In Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are moving upon us tonight. In Jesus' name. God spoke to me late this afternoon, actually. After a a lot of rabbit trails. If anybody's ever prepared a sermon, it's not normal. It is if you're not trying to see what God has to say. If you want to prepare a sermon, you don't want God in it, no problem. I can whip out thousands of those sermons. But when it comes to what is God saying right now, sometimes I have to go down, and I started four sermons today. And I got about two or three pages in, a page in, five pages in, and none of them were right. Good sermons, but not right. And then God said, actually part of this I'm blaming on my wife because she dropped a few seeds and I didn't like it at all. And uh, come on, I can admit that. My wife dropped off some seeds and I didn't like it. And if you're ever married, you'll know you won't like everything your spouse has to say. But then after she left and I was a little... Now, you know, I was having a battle with them. Then I began to realize, well, if I have a problem with it, it must be good. Come on. So then I started processing that. And God spoke to me, restoration. Hallelujah. And then he spoke another thing to me. With nothing wasted. Remember when Jesus took the five loaves? Three fishes and fed 5,000 people. After people had eaten, Jesus said something to them. And it's in John chapter 6, verse 12. And this is the scripture that God took me to right after he said that scripture or, or said what he spoke to me. And he said, gather up now the fragments. What's fragments? The broken pieces that are left over. So that nothing may be lost or wasted. You got to understand something. There was a miracle that took place. 5,000 people was fed. With five loaves, three fishes. But the Lord said, gather up all the crumbs. So that nothing is wasted. Thank you, Jesus. And what God said today, he said, in God's hands, nothing is wasted. How many have ever had like a season of your life, you're like, man, that was a waste. Nothing but couch, remote control. God has a way of causing nothing to be wasted. Why? Because God is a great restorer. When he restores, he restores the waste. He restores your crumbs. We're going to get somewhere tonight. And it's, how many have ever been to a service and been nailed? Whether you, I mean, just knowing it's for you. Like, bam, right in the head. Well, that, tonight might be that night. Some of you, it was last night, but we'll do it again. Hallelujah. Have you spent years praying for somebody in your family? Hallelujah. Have you been spent years praying for somebody in your family to be saved without seeing an answer? Maybe the enemy is trying to make you think that you're wasting your time. Most of the time when you pray for somebody, what happens? First, nothing. Or they get worse. It's like, great, I started praying for him. Now he's having 12 beers a day. He was only having two before. Come on. Sometimes it seems like that. 
Now, have you spent part of your life addicted to drugs and alcohol? Or do you feel that it's too late for God to do anything with you? See, sometimes you'll spend some of your life doing things that you know you're not supposed to do. And then when God finally gets a hold of you, you think, well, he can't use this. And some of you know my life story. You know a lot of my testimony. And if God can use me, he can use anybody in the world. Have you seen relationships in your life crumble and fall apart? It's not always a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife. Sometimes it's friends. How many have ever had a really close friend and all of a sudden it just, man, it, hurt, it almost hurts worse, doesn't it, when you lose somebody very close to you? Does it look like the hurts run so deep that you'll never be healed of that past relationship? See, what the problem is sometimes is whenever somebody breaks up with you or you lose somebody as a friendship, the enemy will come and prey on that and expand all kinds of stuff, usually lies, to make you feel worse than it really is. Have anybody, has anybody here lost their job or suffered a bad investment and finances have been lost? Perhaps you feel that you will never recover what you've lost. Today is the day to declare no more waste. No more waste. I want you to understand, God has a way when he restores, he turns it around for your good. He takes what the enemy meant to destroy you and turns it around so that you are stronger than you've ever been before. See, no more stolen years. No more stolen relationships. No more health issues being stolen from your life. No more resources being stolen. If your life is filled with broken fragments, because that's what this is, your life is filled with broken fragments. He will restore and build the broken areas of your life. Why? Because God cares about every fragment. He cares about every piece. In God's hands, nothing's wasted. I used to have an illustration I did for deliverance. When I would be ministering to somebody with a broken heart, I would take a piece of paper and I would cut out a heart. And I would take that heart and I would glue it together. I mean, glue it. And then I'd begin to minister to them and stir them up and talk to them for a while. And then at, at that time, the glue had set pretty good. So then I began to pull the paper apart. This is just paper, plain paper. Try to open that heart up, and when it did, pieces of the heart from the left would be stuck to the right, and from the right would be stuck to the left, and it just shredded that heart. And I said, that's what your heart's like right now. But what they didn't know is I had already drawn an, another heart, and I already cut that heart out that was whole. I said, you know what happens when God comes on the scene? He takes that broken heart. He takes that shredded heart. He takes those pieces that have been ripped out and given to somebody else that didn't want that, that, that discarded your heart, that just threw you away, didn't care about what you felt and, and hurt you. It might be a mom. It might be a dad. It might be a brother or sister. It might even be a friend. But it, it meant most of the time is, is somebody of the opposite sex that breaks a person's heart. And, and, and when God comes on the scene, he takes all those fragments and puts it back together again. He gives you a new heart. But see, the problem is a lot of people in the church today walking around trying to love somebody else with that broken heart. 
It's like, I love you with my whole heart. Well, it's only a piece of it. You don't even know what love is when you have been broken until God heals you. Come on, somebody receive this. We're going different avenues. Why? Because we've got to get in all the nick and crannies. We've got to get all the stuff. We're sweeping up tonight. We're going for the fragments. What's funny is a broken heart can be broken if somebody as young as this that has wounded, has a wounded heart that really hurts sometimes. And, and you can have so many more years of experience but have the same heart. But God can heal them both just like that. God's going to heal some people tonight. He's going to set some people free tonight. You know what? If somebody has discarded you, got rid of you, uh, broke up with you, done something to hurt you, they don't deserve any of your heart. They don't deserve your memories to be, oh, I remember the good times. Blah, get rid of the good times too. Hallelujah. Come on. God has somebody so much better than the person that might have been ripped out of your life or, or hurt you. Come on. So much more. God has somebody more. And you're saying more? Hallelujah. Oh, okay. You're saying it for them. Okay. Hallelujah. Got to, I had to stop and double check on that one. And the wife is saying, hey, man, somebody knew. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you are more happy about that. This is the first time some of you are receiving. You're like, yeah, go, girl. All right. See, in God's hands, nothing is wasted. That's why he sees everybody and he sees every avenue, everything. And you might think, I've done this, I've done that. I've spent years doing this and nothing has happened. See, in God, every tear that you shed, every blood that you've bled, every sweat that you've sweat will all be rewarded for in due season. Only one person was happy. The prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 wasted his time. Isn't that right? Come on. His resources, his relationships and his health. But when he brought the fragments and the pieces of his life back to his father, the father completely restored what had been wasted. He was broken. He had nothing left. And God swept all that up and said, come on. See, won't your heavenly father do the same for you? Bring restoration to everything that you've ever lost. Sometimes I don't believe a parent knows how bad they can hurt a child. I really don't. I really don't believe a parent many times will even know how much they can hurt a child. Say, why are you saying that without following it up? Because I told you, I'm just going into the nicks and crannies, just getting right in there, just fell in the holes tonight. Come on. See, when it looks like things are too broken, too wasted, too far gone, don't give up. No matter how much you have lost, no matter how far you have gone, never give up. Instead, give it all to God. It's literally like you drop a vase and that's your life. You sweep it up in a dustpan and you lay it before the Lord and say, and here, let's see what you got. You can't use me. So you got to understand I was raised in a very hard life and I came out of a lot of junk. I have no reason whatsoever to have any success in my life.
See, in my house, when I was growing up, cough medicine was Jack Daniels. NyQuil was too weak. Abuse was normal. You come home 15 minutes late, even in a hailstorm, you get beat. And I'm telling you, all this stuff happened in my life. You got to understand, whenever I stood before a man of God and I prayed that prayer and said, Jesus, come into my life. The prophetic word that come out of his mouth is, I called you from your mother's womb. I'm like, what? What can you do with a kid like me? I'm broken. I'm, I'm a broken person. I'm no, I, there's nothing right in me. But see, God swept all that stuff up. And every wound that I'd ever felt, every hurt that I'd ever seen, everything that ever happened to me, all those lies and things that I lived with as a child got swept up. And now I see into the innermost parts of people's lives and I could prophesy and be used by the glory of God for healing and breakthrough in many people's lives because of that fragmented life. God turned it around. Come on, God turned it around. You know, God can use your mess. Sometimes you have a smile on your face like everything is good. Then when you finally just plop in that bed of yours and the Snapchat finally dies down and nobody's responding, that's when it starts like, oh, that it starts sinking in again. It's like, man, I just feel this stuff I don't like. What do we do a lot of times when we feel depressed? We eat. Man, bonbons. Oh, bonbons. Come on. That's not something to be bragging about. Like, yeah, that's it. Come on. See, we got to understand. God will restore you and bring increase. See, when God restores you, he makes you better than you would have been before you were broken. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12 says this. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of the streets to dwell in. See, God promises That people who fast and pray, you got to understand, will be people of restoration. When you lay your life down for the things of God, He will restore your life. And it will be for generation after generation. See, sometimes you don't even realize. Well, she's not there now. But if a mom gets delivered, set free... Her children get affected because it's generation after generation. Don't ever think you're too far gone or your situation's too bad or you've wasted too much of your life. How many know when you're first growing up, it takes forever to get to 21? Teenagers over there are like, yeah, it's taking forever. Whatever. Get over it. Then all of a sudden you turn 21, and then it's like, bam, you're 30. What happened? And then you're 40. It's like, what in the world? How many remember... 31, 32, 33, 34. No, you mostly remember 40. Poof. You fell into that one. Before you know it, it seems like time is running out. See, sometimes our life is like 
watching a television show that only has about five minutes left, and you know there's no way they're going to finish it. You know they're gonna, there's not enough time. They're not going to find the guy. They're not going to find him. And then they flap on that thing that says, to be continued. See, that's what our life is a lot of times. God comes on the scene, boom, to be continued. He heals you, he sets you free, and the rest of the episode is restoration. See, God is never done with you. Even when you're done, He is never done. God will never give up on you, and God will, He will take the pieces and the fragments of your life and do a work of restoration. There's only one thing that can stop Him you have to let Him. Did you hear me? You have to let God restore you. You have to let God pick up the fragments. Sometimes it's very painful for him to pick up your fragments. Why, it's stuff that you try to discard. You try to get over. It hurts worse just to get over it. You got to say why. Why would God do that? Because in God, nothing is wasted. doesn't matter how many were fed off of that batch of five fish and three loaves. He didn't want anything wasted. Why do you think he's going to waste anything on you? He's like, I want to just scoop up all your crumbs and make sure that we use every part of your life for the good of God. I want to use every morsel of your life, that wilderness season, that dry season, that season of lack, that season when you were broke, that season when you were uh, backslidden even. I want to use the season when you felt like you were going through an abusive season, but I rescued you in that season, and that's what I want you to feel. And God wants to scoop all that up, and he puts you together, and he makes you who you are. And in God doing that, my next part, remember this, remember that. We're not there yet, I just want you to remember it. The power of a vision, driven life, is what we need to understand. See, when God first, he takes all, he restores everything in your life, he scoops it all up and says nothing's going to be wasted. Now he wants you to understand there is a power of of a vision-driven life. You have vision, there is power in your life. How many have vision in your life? Now let me tell you something. Completing ninth grade is not a vision. Completing eighth grade is not a vision. You need to have a bigger vision for your life. What are you going to do this summer? As little as possible. Is that a vision? Is that a vision? Come on, I'm going to go over here for a minute. Hallelujah. Is that a vision? Does God stop all of heaven and say, now that's what I'm talking about. They're going to rot. It's summer. And they're going to take it off. And then when they have to do physical fitness, it's going to kick their Mm -hmm. Remember that? You forgot about that part, didn't you? Lay around all summer, and then they say, run. And you're going to be like, to where? They're going to say, do some burpees. Come on, there's some things going to be coming for you next year. Hallelujah. How many have ever been going into things of your life, and all of a sudden you feel like you got sucker punched? What's a sucker punch? Anybody know what a sucker punch is? You're hit out of nowhere. It'd be just like you're sitting there minding your own business and she just punches you right in the head. That's a sucker punch. Don't think about it. Don't do it. I'm just saying an illustration. Come on. That'd be like Tasha jumping over the chair and hitting Ben upside the head. That's a sucker punch. Ben say, what? 
Come on, he's about to defend himself. You see that? He's about to bring out the black belt on that one. Hallelujah. So back off. Back off. Hallelujah. But that's what a sucker punch is. And life has a way of pulling the rug out from under us, doesn't it? Has anybody been going in the things of your life and all of a sudden it's like somebody just hit you? You're like, what happened? It was good. What happened? It's like somebody just comes and pulls a rug out from under you. God took me to the story of Samson. He was called by God and once possessed the potential to be the most powerful judge Israel had ever seen. One bad decision. Anybody here ever make a bad decision? How about on this side? These two. Oh, Tasha's agreeing. Hallelujah. The rest of them are clean. Hallelujah. In their head. Hallelujah. Anybody over here ever make a bad decision? <laughs> ever? Ever? Nobody ever? I know my wife and I are pure. In other words, we admit we've made some bad decisions. But one bad decision. In other words, your whole life, the calling, the gifts, everything that God said he's going to do was being fulfilled. And then all of a sudden, whoop. One bad decision led to another. And at the end of his story, he was bound up, blinded, made into a mockery. In front of his own enemies. Not only was his physical vision taken. But also his internal purpose was robbed. In other words, he was sucker punched. Come on, I'm paraphrasing this. Come on, you, but you got to understand we're going somewhere. He was humiliated. And the rug... <laughs> was pulled out from under him. See, if the enemy can convince you that the best days are behind you, he wins. And if you're a teenager and you think the best days are behind you, you need delivered right now. See, God will de delegate I mean, let's, let's stop there. I want, to, I want to spend more time on the enemy. The enemy loves to take you down and tear you down and tear you down. When you feel like you've been sucker punched, the enemy comes on the scene. He will degrade you. He will humiliate you. He will pull you down. And it gets you to the place that you have sole disqualification. You feel like, I am worthless. Come on. Once a mighty man, now I don't have anything to live for. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. What happens to a dead person? You ever see a dead person fulfill a vision? Come on, I want to be playing with that scripture. We never get playing with it. Are you going to do much if you're dead? Are you going to do much? No, you can't do nothing. You're dead. See, that's where you have no vision. If the enemy takes you out of your vision, you might as well be dead. Come on. If you have nothing to live for, you might as well be dead. And that's what the enemy wants to do. So what do you need? A new vision. Does anybody here need a new vision? You think God brought you here tonight to get a new vision? 
See, a man who never knew weakness was brought to his knees. See, but there was a prodigal moment. See, we all have a prodigal moment where we can make it back. And the wayward son made a decision that it would be better to be blind and serving the Lord than to be captive to a lie. See, like God does, he immediately gave Samson a new vision. The very thing the enemy intended to destroy him with brought him to a place of victory. See, we can stay in a pity. We can stay in in our pity pot. But if you stay there, you're going to die. Stay on your bed eating ring dings and ho-hos and laying on your bed. That's old-fashioned cakes that nobody probably knows about. But I'm telling you, man, there's a bunch of chocolate-filled stuff and all kinds of... They mostly sold them at liquor stores. Not that I would know why. But anyway, you consume them and lay on your bed and cry. Oh, woe is me. Watch sloppy movies and moan and groan and put a sad face on Snapchat. Now, that's a vision. Some of you have lived already. You know what happens if somebody breaks your heart and you lay in a pool of your own tears, grumbling and moaning and groaning? They win. That dog is out there having a good time, laughing with his friends, and you're at home going, (laughs) How many have ever got rid of a dog? I'm talking about a man that is a dog. <laughs> and at the time it hurt, but after a while you're like, yeah. Anybody? Mm-hmm. Some of you are too, too young to have a dog. You say, oh, they're all right, they're all right. I just pet them. Hallelujah. That's the problem. Why are you changing colors? Hallelujah. See, sometimes blindness will bring you sight. Isaiah 43, the message says, Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present. I'm about to do a something brand new and it's bursting out. Don't you see it? See, God is about to release a new life in your life. You can understand. Don't give the enemy victory. The enemy loves to keep you down. Samson went on to do more after that revelation with God than he had his entire life. Sometimes the rug being pulled out from under you is the best thing that can happen. Sometimes God says, go ahead to the enemy. Come on, just like he said to uh, Job, go ahead. Tempt my servant. I believe God knew that not only Job would make it through everything and make it through and know, I know that God knew double portion was going to be poured out. See, God knows about restoration. 
Sometimes a rug being pulled out from under you is a good thing. I used to be addicted to art. And when I would draw and sketch, I had to get delivered 100 times a day. But you know, I got to the place that when I would mess up the picture and it just would not be fixed, just couldn't be fixed no matter what I did, it was messed up, had too many eraser marks, had too much stuff. Those were the best pictures that ended up being done. Why? Because I had to start all over again. The reason I say that is because Sometimes the rug being pulled out from under you is the best thing that can happen to you. Why? Because now it's a new thing. Has life blindsided you at any time in your life? Have you been hit with something and thought, my goodness, what is this? How many have ever been having a good day and all of a sudden something happens and you just plop in a chair going, What are we going to do? It was a good day. Is it still a good day? It was still a good day. But now something has come and cut. See, God doesn't abandon his vision for your life even if you mess it up. Anybody? Is this thing on? See, even if you mess it up, God doesn't abandon his vision. He doesn't all of a sudden go, oh, Paula did it. Man, I invested a lot of years in that woman. Man, I sent archangels down and warrior angels. I gave her the world, and she just blew it. Well, done with her. Next. God doesn't do that, does he? Say, thank you, Jesus. You should thank God. Come on, we all should. Hallelujah. See, if God was going to just give up on somebody, he'd have already said, Bill, I'm done. Forget that guy. See, God doesn't respond that way. He He never abandons the vision. We abandon See, when God says you're going to write a book and you begin to try to abandon that vision, he never abandons it. You say, well, what if I just have given up and I might have missed the time? What if I have missed everything? What if I have missed the time that it was supposed to come out? What if I missed all the stuff that was supposed to be in it? What if I've already passed it up? Then God comes with his broom and picks up all the crumbs, all the fragments of everything that you wasted, scoops it all up, and dumps it in your new vision so that nothing will be lost. Come on, is anybody feeling it? Come on. Everybody say, it's your fault. Point at her, hallelujah, it's her fault, that's it. It's her fault. She sold the seed, so it's coming out, hallelujah. Come on. You say, well, I probably already missed it, I might as well forget it now. Yeah, you missed it. God didn't. Sometimes a vision is like this. Imagine that I've got a collar on, and I, that's, the, that's what God wanted me to do, this pull. And I go around, and I start fulfilling this, and I start fulfilling that, and every time I try to get too far away, I'm still chained to that vision. God's going to fulfill that thing. He's still going to get it done, and I might be able to do a lot of things and keep a lot of things going, but that thing is still going to have to happen. And the faster you learn to sweep up those, allow God, say, God, go ahead, sweep up the crumbs. 
Go ahead, sweep them up. Come on. Trust me, you want God to sweep up your crumbs more than you want to miss it. I'm going to say something that's going to surprise some people in this room. Every person in this room has missed it. In other words, you've missed an opportune time in God. You've passed it up. You've turned the wrong way. You have missed something in your life. So God's going to clean it up. God's going to get the dust buster out. Come on. I think God follows some of us. He, he, I know he follows this couple. It's a dust buster. Every time they try to walk, hallelujah. He follows. Now, dumps right in front of you. And if you walk through it, he just... Numbs it in front of you again. And you're like, man, why do we keep crossing this stuff? Getting on my shoes. You get my picture? Come on. I'm not picking on you. You just happen to be the ones that I'm talking about. (laughs) This isn't just for them. Come on. Come on. Sometimes he needs two dust busters for some people, Tasha. All of a sudden, she's like, man, I hit a wall. No, that's the pile of dust. He's been stooping up behind you. (laughs) He's just trying to get you to get new vision for it. She's like, oh, that was an amen. I felt it. See, sometimes we think, man, I just hit a wall. I ain't going nowhere now. No, that's just God putting your pile in front of you. There's no buts. Hypothetically, there was a girl I know. She cleans her room. And she had a tendency to sweep everything off into some section of a room. And that all got scooped up. And little piles. And let's say, uh, hypothetically, there's this other girl. She had a tendency when she wanted to clean up her room... This side of the room, everything went in the drawers. Every empty bottle, every used wash rag, everything went into these drawers. Well, just recently, in this hypothetical story, my wife would have came and had some spring cleaning, found all this stuff. See, God has a way of causing all your stuff to be cleaned up, scooped up, and organized, and put in front of you. Some of you, that's all you need is an organizer. So the best way God can do that is this. Sweep up your crumbs. Why? Because you made a mess of it. All right, isn't this good? Why you got your arms crossed? You know, that's not very receiving. <laughs> she just preached that to somebody literally almost a week ago. <clears throat> I remember. See, God doesn't abandon his vision in your life when you mess it up. Anybody here can sing the song, I did it my way? Anybody? How many have ever thrown anything away because you were done with something? I mean, you were doing good, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm just done with all this. You know what God did? Wouldn't that stake you go home and your bed's piled up with all the stuff you threw away? What happened? Come on, I'm not talking about literal. Sometimes God will just bring it back, and that stuff that you, every seed that was good was from God is still there. Because nothing is wasted. 
Sorry, I can't let you have your butts right now. Hallelujah. See, you're not disqualified. They look over here at Ben and say, oh, man. That's it. You're out. No. God doesn't work that way. Even if you disqualify yourself, hypothetically. Not that one, that one. You had to come, it wasn't really him. See, you were still very much called, purposed, and loved. Even if you're going the wrong way. See, God has a way of even using your worldly life in your Christian life. He will use your past for your future. He will use things and nurture things from your past that you'll have compassion for that you would have never had if you didn't experience those things. See, don't allow the enemy to win one more battle. Don't allow the enemy to win one more battle or one more day. Turn back to the Lord and discover his vision for you. Plans to prosper, not to harm you in any way. Plan for hope and plan for a future. Remember this picture. Remember that. When you look at this, what do you see? Huh? A bullseye. Come on, some of you could cry out, what do you see? A dot. One dot. Is that the majority of the people in this room? You say you see a dot? You were not meant to get the right answer. Come on. This is not a test that you... It's how you respond to the results is the test. I'm going to hold off a while. No, I'm just kidding. I'm doing it now. Come on. This is one dot smack dab in the middle of this paper. Anybody see that most of this paper is blank? Most of this paper is clean. So why was most people focused on the black dot? More of the page is clean. If I had put black dots all over the whole page and left that piece white, you would have been focused on the white dot. Come on. This is God's illustration, not mine. My family has been trying to get this out of me all afternoon. How often in life do we miss out because of one distraction? We miss out in life because there's one thing that we're distracted by in our whole life. Everything else is good. But we have a distraction. And we get caught up on the dot. We look at it and we're like, oh man. Everything else is good, but that one thing, oh. It's distraction. We make something big out of a small thing. You can have all your bills paid, but if you don't have one bill to pay, how many know we focus on the bill we can't pay instead of focusing on the ones we all got to pay? 
It's a distraction. Sometimes your, your testimony is you have paid most of your bills. <laughs> I'm messing with some people tonight. It's got to hurt a little bit. That's why I'm going to deeper. See, it's like hosting a party or an event where only one shows up. There you are, surrounded by people. You've got to understand who love and support you when you're in a big crowd, but you've got to understand you're riddled with rejection sometimes when you're in a big party. And let's say you have a big party. Let's just, let me just find my signal. But let's say, hypothetically, she's your best friend. I know it's probably not true, but let's just say it. I'm just messing with you. Back off. But let's just say, hypothetically, She's your best friend, and you're going to have the biggest party of all time. Abby's having the party. And, and, but Abby's party is going to be the, it's, I'm going to keep you in your childhood, the best bouncy house of all time. She's not grown up enough to have any kind of other party, so we're going to keep it pure. A bouncy house. I'm not even going to give her a clown. It's just the best bouncy house. I mean, it's like, bam. Amen. I mean, you can bounce on a whole section and nobody even knows you're there. Cake as tall as my hand right now. A chocolate fountain, all kinds of stuff going on. And she invites all her friends. Except you. Would that be something that... Now let's go ahead and take this and turn it around a little bit. Let's say you invite all your friends. And she doesn't show up. She's surrounded by all kinds of people. They love her. They're, she's having a good time. Somebody brought her an iPhone 6, fat phone, all kinds of tablets. And she got iPads, she got the best gifts of all time. Somebody gave her a car. But if she really was your best friend, it would almost hurt that one person didn't show up. It's a black dog. See, you can be surrounded by people who support you, but you can get rejected by one. Come on. Rejection and insecurity over one can mess up the whole party. Now they're both probably nervous. Man, if I have a party, I've got to invite her now. I've got to. I've got to go because I don't want to mess her up. <laughs> I'm messing with this friendship. We'll see how it lasts. No, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Calm down. You know, social media can hurt you. My wife, Sam, are both probably like, what? But Sam's like, what is that? It doesn't work on a flip phone. But you can get almost rejected by Snapchat, Facebook, and all these different apps. You post some really wonderful posts. And you post ones that are like, wow. And people respond to all the ones that are like, eh. But nobody responds to the ones that you really thought was going to be something. Why are you focused on that? It's a black dot. See, we've got to stop letting the 1% keep us down. See, you can have a whiteboard and have one black dot in the middle, and that could be your distraction. 
You can have a whole room pretty clean, but if you have one Kleenex on the floor. It can be a mess. How many know if you're trying to keep a clean house, if you see one Kleenex on the floor, it's easy to pick that up. But when you get about 10 Easter eggs on the floor, you start to think, eh, forget it. See, that's a black dot on the floor. One thing. One thing mess you up. See, the truth is, the day we live in is distracting and defeating if we don't set our focus on Christ. Christ is all the white space. Somebody thought the black dot was Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you make Christ so small? <laughs> you guys are you guys are keeping him so tiny. Get him out of his box. Hallelujah. I mean all this is Christ, all of it but that. But we're like Oh man. See this is what a distraction is. You're just having a good time walking along and you You, you, you're stuck now. <laughs> then if you pick it up, you're like. <laughs> I never used this. This is clean. I just watered it up. See, your, your, where's your focus? <laughs> See, the enemy would love nothing more than to fix your eyes on what is to derail God's course. See, you're going along and what not? One thing. One little thing. <laughs> Messes you up. See, most people, when they get an F on a on a on a test, they don't look at the they don't look at it and go, Hey, I got one right. Yeah, I thought that one was wrong. I just guessed. That hurt a little bit, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Ryan was like, oh, high school's tough. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I remember I guessed on a test one time, got a B plus. I was like, what? I was like, is that Bill? Is there another bill in the class? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's when you have too much sports. Hallelujah. I went home to study, took a shower, and laid on the bed. and said, I'll just shut my eyes for five minutes. Next thing I knew, Mom was like, get up, Bill. That was my good mornings. Hallelujah. See, God loves to eliminate us from experiencing the peace of God. The peace of God is always gone when you get stuck on one thing. It's like waking up in the morning, you look in the mirror and you're like, and you find a pimple on the end of your nose. The whole day is wrapped around that pimple. It doesn't matter what else you got. You're thinking about the pimple all day. You're driving in the car. You're going. Come on. 
on all day. See, and there it, it, it works. That's what's so funny is all of Christ is here, and that one little thing messes us up. I mean, it's like literally everything is going good, and then all of a sudden one thing falls from the sky. What? It's like my neighbor when a leaf hits his lawn. He gets the more out. Mm. <laughs> and his wife stares at our leaves. <laughs> like they better stay over there. Sometimes I just like to get the blower out and blow them their way just to see what happens. <laughs> Or blow them right to the edge of the property and then stop. I'm just having fun. See, one little black dot can mess us up. Still can't believe some of you thought that was Christ. It's like, hello, little Jesus. I got a big God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't have a whiteboard. That would have really made Jesus tiny. Hallelujah. How many have ever had a good day and all of a sudden one little dot puts you in a bad mood? One little thing can put you in a bad mood. Where's my sweatpants? Where's my sweatpants? Where's my sweatpants? You got them on? What are you wearing my sweatpants for? They're mine. Well, I'll just wear jeans. Hypothetically. (laughs) Quit focusing your energy on the one thing who is against you. Instead, give extent gratitude to the one who is for you. And that is Jesus. Not black dot Jesus. Jesus. The big God. See, sometimes we treat Jesus like, come on, Jesus. We sing, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Our our little pet Jesus. Come on, he's a God. Our God. Surround yourself with people that lift you up. You know what a really good friend does? It turns you away from that pimple on the end of your nose. It's when you have a friend and you, you're, you're feeling insecure about it. And they're like, man, look at that thing. <laughs> I'll bet that hurts. You might want to get that lanced. I wouldn't even came to school if I looked like that this morning. Come on. How many know that's not friends that you want? Hallelujah. This is hurting a little bit. Some of you are laughing so hard you can't stand yourself. Surround Surround yourself with people that lift you up. That's a good friend that lifts you up. When you're down, they lift you up. They don't kick you while you're down. Yeah, cry. You should cry. You lost everything. Come to school, you're crying because your car didn't start. And they'll be like, yeah, you should cry. That was a good car. It's like, thanks a lot. Sometimes that's what the ponies do, don't they? They try to kick you when you're down. If you're feeling bad, they'll make you feel worse.
Come on, this is good stuff. Is anybody receiving tonight? Are some of you still petting your little dot Jesus? <laughs> Sam's like, man. I'm talking about her too. She said it over there too. Huh? You weren't alone. Nearly alone, but you weren't alone. We got two dots on the page now. Hey, no, just kidding. See, where's your focus? See, here's the way we're supposed to do. When it comes to the things of God, things come as a distraction. And our focus is on the Lord. So we're supposed to keep our focus on the Lord. Just keep it on the Lord. Kind of reminds me of the time when I had the illustration of my keys and somebody had to clean it up. See, sometimes sometimes this is the only one that's real. And all these others are a lie. Because once you get your focus off of Jesus, all you see is everything else. Come on, is this good? Is anybody receiving it? You wouldn't have received it if I put the big white board Jesus here instead of the black dot Jesus. This is the only way some of you received it. Some of you are still worried about waking up with a pimple. I break that curse of Jesus now. Don't look in the mirror at it while you're driving. That's dangerous. What was you doing, officer? Uh, officer, officer, you see this thing? I was getting a good look at it. Officer looks at you and says, well, the rest of your face is pretty. It's just that big red thing. See, there's freedom and, and peace like you never knew before everywhere else. And it's just like Jesus literally does this to your life. When you focus on Jesus, he takes away your dot. He takes away the one thing that distracts you. And your focus is on him. Come on. I couldn't have done that if Jesus was just the black dot. I'd be like. (laughs) Does anybody receive it tonight? Does anybody receive it? Nothing wasted. Nothing left behind. Nothing. Restore your focus on Jesus. Come on. Some of you are going to be stuck in this for a while. You're going to be stuck seeing black dots. You're going to be laying in your bed going, what's that? You're going to look at your ceiling and see one thing and think it's a spider. The rest of the room can be clear. I could understand you freaking out when the whole room is full of spiders and you have one spot that's not. But we see one spider and we're freaking out. It's way over there. I can see it at the other end of the room. It's like when a woman sometimes sees a mouse. They don't want me to kill it. But they see one mouse. It could be on the other side of the room.
Look at some. Come on. Hallelujah. I was working on an old house one time. I, I opened the closet. I, I was taking these clothes out. We're ate up with malls. I took this one big pile out, and when I did, dozens of mice jumped all over me. <laughs> it was World War III. I was like, boom, 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 boom. I was chasing them in their holes. Hallelujah. Come here. You're feeling sorry for the mouse. But if there was one right next to you, you'd be like. No, you'd be like, save it. Release it outside so it can come back in. Okay, we got you. Is anybody getting set free tonight? Anybody getting set free? Are you going to focus on big Jesus? <laughs> it's not what a little God we serve. No, it's a mighty God. Hallelujah. So we're going to focus on big God. <laughs> Come on, isn't that good? She's going to use us against you at home. If I were you, I, I'd put little black dots here and there just to keep him reminded. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we receive this. We receive it right now. I thank you, Lord, for the seed that was planted in my heart to get this message out tonight because I know it's right. I thank you that you are. Mighty God. <laughs> our focus our focus will be on you tonight. Nothing else, just you. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm gonna ask my wife to play a song, and while the song plays, I want you to get your focus on everything else other than that dot. Focus on Jesus. We're going to allow God to minister to us tonight. Come on. So let's worship for a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One black dot, that's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> 